Hi everyone, welcome back to Simply Oil Painting. Um, I'm going to do uh, one or two small tutorials for you this week uh, in one video. Um, I am going to just show you different ways of painting trees and creating bark on trees um, and foliage. Um, and we're also going to be working with some shadows as well to bring those trees to life. So that's the focus this week. Just a little tutorial. Um, one of you guys asked me to paint you some trees to show you how to paint close-up trees that type of thing so i have a canvas pad here um i'm just going to do one or two tutorials on this okay just to give you the basics of painting trees and different colors we're going to be using some palette knives yes um so that's the theme this week I hope you enjoy it. It's nice to know to learn these small little things as well, I think. And uh, once again, thank you very, very much for all your support. Um, I'm very grateful for all the help that everyone's given me. Um, hints and tips are always welcome because uh, I love learning just as much as you guys. Okay, so thank you very, very much for all your support. Um, so without further ado, I will mount my camera on this stand overhead and we'll... Um, Let's have a go of this and have a bit of fun with it, yeah? So, uh, here goes. Let's hope it turns out well. It will. All right, guys, let's have a look. Okay, guys, um, this is it. My canvas pad, uh, I think it's 14 by 10. Okay, 14 by 10. And I have a little palette just above us because we don't need much mixing space, really. Um, I'll run through the colours. We have titanium white. We have Naples yellow, burnt umber, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow pale. Now there's a couple of different cadmium yellows. This is cadmium yellow pale. I find this the nicest one, it's nice and rich. Um, cadmium red, deep. I have a little bit of tailor blue. You can use French ultramarine if you like as well. Um, and I have some lamp black. And if you don't have lamp black, you can use Payne's grey as well. Um, so there are just a few colours I'm going to use for today. Okay, everyone? Um, without further ado, uh, well, now, I'm just going to draw a little horizon line. Um, now, the photograph I have here, you should see on your screen just right now. And it's a lovely scene of a tree close-up with a nice bright yellow field off in the background. So I'm just going to use this as an impression, uh, just to give you an idea. Um, about painting trees and I'm going to do one or two trees off in the distance as well we'll make this we can make this nice and uh, colourful so I'm going to take my pointy brush I'm just going to dip it into some turpentine I have here now it's just regular turpentine okay um, you can put a drop of linseed oil into it if you like it's completely up to yourselves but um, for the most part I don't use very much linseed oil uh, perhaps if I'm using very detailed work um, on a big painting, I'll use a little bit of linseed oil just on its own in a little jar. And I'll just dip into the linseed oil, mix my paint, and just use that. So that's perfectly fine as well. Now, make sure it's refined linseed oil. Um, you can't just use any old linseed oil from a builder suppliers or something like that. It has to be refined. Um, you can get that in your local art store. It's, it's, it's fairly cheap because you only use a little bit anyway. And I don't use any other mediums now, any thinners or any quick drying aids or anything like that. Um, I just love using the paint and the thinners and that's it. Nice and simple, back to basics. Um, none, nothing fancy here guys. So, with a pointy brush, I'm just going to dampen that and I'm going to just take some burnt umber. Just a touch. And I'm going to just draw, just draw a horizon line off in the distance. And let's come down nice and low now with this. Let's go just along here. Okay, simple, job done. That's the horizon line. Uh, next, I will move to this brush, little flat synthetic brush. And I have this brush now a long, long time, guys. The, the, the name is even worn off and then the numbers is that old. But look, it's still fine. And when I'm cleaning my brushes, I just, just rinse them in the turpentine and I go into the house then and I give them a good wash with soapy water, warm soapy water, and just stand them upright and they're as good as new. Now you can shape the brushes as well if you like and what I just generally do is um, when they're wet from the soapy water okay just give them a good a quick dry and then I wrap tissue around I wrap tissue around the brush like so and 
once it's wet then it'll form a nice fine point on the top of the brush again you see and just let that stand in for you can leave it stand overnight or even until the next time you're using it and then just pull off the tissue and you have a nice clean flat brush again so that's a handy little one that's what i that's what i tend to do okay nice bright blue sky let's take now it's kind of it's almost a pale gray really so let's just take a little touch of turpentine and i don't need much now because this canvas paper here is very smooth all right it's almost pure flat paper there's just a tiny hint of a grain going through this paper so i'm just going to take some now let me think about this here i want to i'm thinking in terms of uh, contrasting colors and i'm thinking of complementary colors so there's going to be a lot of green in the painting so i'm just going to do a very pale blue i think and this tail or blue um, tends to have a slightly greeny kind of a hue to it um, it's not as vibrant as a, and as rich as cobalt blue or french ultramarine it's a more kind of an earthy kind of a blue and um, it's very soft it's very it's very nice for working with landscapes if there's a lot of green in a landscape this is a lovely sky color okay now i hope that's i hope that's showing up all right there on your on your screens um again i know i keep saying this and i keep banging on about this all the time but my camera quality is not great here so um the colors are not really transferring to your screens um that looks quite luminous on the camera but it's actually kind of quite earthy close up as i'm painting it here so the camera's not great it's only like i don't know it's it's only like eight or nine megapixels or something like that so it's not fantastic um so i apologize for that and the video quality is supposed to be 20 supposed to be 12 p but it's nowhere near that anyway definitely so until such time as i can afford a decent camera guys we'll just have to use this i hope you don't mind um my goal now guys this year is to get a good camera so that's my that's my goal try and get a decent camera and i can do some proper tutorials for all you guys um and show you real vibrant colors properly on that screen because i notice even when i look back on this the video myself after editing and all that kind of stuff is done it's just not excellent quality it's uh and it's kind of annoying and it's probably very frustrating as well for me because i know i can do really good tu tutorials but if i just don't have the equipment it's just not possible it's so i will um i will endeavor to uh buy a decent camera guys all right eventually and by the way if you would like to support me now guys uh, you know um you can go to patreon you can go to my patreon page and i would be very 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 grateful if you could support me in any way at all and that would help me get some decent equipment as well and um you know it's it only has to be one or two euros a month or something like that anything at all just to help now so i'm slightly darker now on the top yes and i'm going to give, give my brush a quick clean and i'm going to just suggest one or two clouds with a slightly smaller brush let's just take some white a little bit of white now i'm bearing in mind now there's going to be a lot of tree coming around here so all of this here is going to be almost entirely tree and foliage so just one or two along here in the distance and it's just a little suggestion that's all so just a quick little wiggle here and there I'm not being very um, particular now guys with this really I'm just giving the impression now that will look fine absolutely fine so the next thing I'm going to do now is put in a nice row of trees away off in the distance here and when mixing greens for trees off in the distance um, generally it would keep them nice and cool so a cool green and that will push them away off into the distance so a little bit of tail or blue a little touch of white and i'm working now guys on 
basically a dry brush there's hardly any thinners in this at all so a nice dry brush tailor blue some titanium white and now we can go two ways with this we could take some burnt sienna that would make a nice green or we could take some naples yellow i'm going to try some naples yellow for this just to see what happens and that's a nice warm green uh, or sorry not a warm green a pale green it's kind of a hilly distant hill kind of a green and let's just put this on now and i'll show you and see what you think there we go um let's put into that a touch of burnt sienna a burnt umber a touch of burnt umber just to darken it slightly just ever so slightly and let's dab these along off in the distance and lots of my trees are done guys really just by dabbing nice and simple you don't have to go to a lot of trouble nice simple trees away off in the distance and these brushes are fantastic when they're kind of splayed out you see the way that's kind of splayed out and that's perfect for painting trees and bushes because it gives you a lovely random edge you see now into this i'm going to put a touch of black and that's even a bit strong now guys isn't it let's take a bit of yellow i just want to darken it just ever so slightly and it just gives it a bit of interest really there we go soften those in so it's just changing as we go uh, let's take a bit of blue see if we could take even take a bit of blue and let's just darken one or two here and there on this and we're bringing more and more texture into the painting now the more we do this and i'm going to put in just one or two dark ones here on this side just like so and that's that's it guys that's all we need to do that's the distant trees finished and we can put some lights on these in a minute um let me just take a light color and fade that off into the distance here okay now there we go okay i'm putting that brush down and i'm taking a different brush and this is a smaller brush again slightly smaller and again splayed i'm going to take some uh taylor blue just a touch and plenty of white and perhaps a touch of naples yellow again now i want this lighter okay and that's not light enough is it I can take, let me take some more white here put some white on the palette and um, let's get some nice light on these trees off in the distance the dab a little bit of light color here and there on these and that's just giving an extra bit of texture okay and that's that's fine for for this little tutorial it's absolutely fine so the next thing i want to do is i want to cut in front of this now with some nice bright grass so i am going to switch to this bigger brush i used earlier give it a quick wipe and i'm going to go into some now i'm going to dampen this slightly because the paper is quite dry so i'll make it nice and wet first and then i'll build thicker paint on top of that does that make sense i'm going to take some cadmium yellow plenty of white nice and thick and some naples yellow all right nice warm yellow off in the distance and let's uh let's just put that across let's make it a little bit richer i'll take a touch of burnt sienna and that'll warm it slightly now let's just cut in front of those trees and give it a wiggle as you're going don't make it a completely straight line and again i will soften these in as i go okay now make it slightly greener And then I'm going to take my soft blender brush, my makeup brush, as it's called, or should I say, 
powder brush. Wouldn't that be right, ladies? A powder brush. And let's just soften these off in the distance here. So I'm just basically pulling that darker colour down into that yellow very gently. Almost as if you're holding a feather in your hand. That's how gently I'm doing it. And you can see then it sort of blends together nice and smoothly off in the distance. So I want to go in and get some nice rich yellow on this. A rich yellowy kind of a green. So take some cadmium yellow and let's take a touch of black. And I know you wouldn't think they make a green but they make a lovely green. Look at that. A nice rich green just towards the front here. Let's put that in. I'm not being very particular with my brush strokes, just left and right. Soften the back. And let's take a bit of thinner for that. Um, also, guys, on the note of colours, just wanted to show you about colours. Um, I use student quality colours. There are Windsor and Newton and Georgian. So let me show you. We have Georgian, okay? Georgian oil. And these are fantastic colours. They are probably the only colours I use. And they really have a very good quality and they have a lot of pigment, pigment in them. They're very rich. Um, this one is Naples Yellow. So these are the colours I use and this is the student quality. Um, now it's expensive enough, but um, it does the job for me. It's absolutely fine. Um, Georgian Oil or else I'll use Winton. So that's Windsor and Newton oil colour and um, these are very very similar now they're, they're both pretty much the same but uh, slightly different manufacturers but these are the two colours now that I use all the time Winton and Georgian um, I suppose it depends on where you're living really and what they're selling but I would try to get a decent a decent paint um, try to avoid kids sets that kind of thing because it, it will make a difference I promise you when you buy a decent paint it will make a difference now if you have the money you can go and buy expensive professional paints by all means but uh, you know if you have that luxury then brilliant but unfortunately I don't so I'm just using these student quality paints now I've always used these paints um, and they seem to be working just fine for me, so I'm going to stick with them. Now, I'm just making a very dark blacky green here, so black and yellow. And I'm going to come along the front here and put that along the front. And let's take a bit of brown into that now as well. Burn Dumber. And I'm just using paint on its own here now, rich, deep, dark paint. Making this nice and dark just along the front. Let's take a little bit of tail of blue with some yellow and some burnt umber and that makes it even richer doesn't it so it's gone from light now to dark as you can see now I'm going to put my brush down and I'm going to pick up a fan brush nice little fan brush yes and I'm going to dampen that and I'm going to go into some Cadmium yellow and titanium white. So you can see what I have on my brush, nice rich bright colour. And just start dabbing off in the distance. And that's creating some nice grassy texture effect in it. It's the very same as the grass tutorial that I just did not so long ago. And it's just to create some texture in that field, that's all. You see? And keep it coming just along here. And let's bring a touch of Naples yellow into this. There we are. And guys, what you could do as well is turn the brush on edge. and use it like that and that gives another nice effect doesn't it you see 
and it's just kind of it's a case really of just messing around with the brush have a bit of fun I like to just keep things nice and simple it has a much nicer effect if you try to go into too much detail with things you can become kind of overwhelmed and um, now I've just taken a bit of burnt cyanide and cadmium yellow there just to add a bit of colour into this you see so it could be little flowers, little reeds, uh, bits of corn and feet, whatever you know uh, it just adds a little bit of colour to the foreground just there you see that now again the colours are not showing through properly on that camera but they're nice and rich here in front of me so that's it guys that's the front that's the field finished so wasn't that easy now moving on to our tree and normally if I was doing something like this up close I would let this dry perhaps for a few hours um, give it a chance to kind of soak into the, the paper or the canvas just so that the next layer will get a bit of a grip and will sit on top of that colour a little bit better um, but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to paint right over this wet into wet um, and for that I'm going to take well, I'm just looking at brushes here I'll just take this little flat brush that I used and we're going to get some really dark rich colour with this now so I think I don't even need thinners I'll just use this dry and I'm going to pick up some burnt cyanide let's go here with some burnt umber and I think we'll just start with that for now um, and we can we can add dark to this and add light to this and so on so let's start at the bottom now looking at the photograph uh, let's just go from here and let's give it a wiggle as it goes up and then it sort of turns and comes out doesn't it big big branch comes right out like that and let's fill this in right across we're going to make a nice big thick tree now for this guys uh, let's take some burnt umber and let's darken it down here and you can see now it's mixing with the green underneath but that's absolutely fine don't worry about that at all and let's take more colour and I'm going to give this a nice thick branch right up here because we have a thick, big thick tree trunk here and these branches are very thick so the trunk can hold it up and another one comes out like this and let's take a touch of black now so black with burnt cyanide and we go across this way here And just soften those colours together a little. Okay. Um, I might make it a bit thicker even, just along here. And we can make it thicker down the end as well. So let's go here. So let's bring this right out. So a nice big tree in a field. And of course don't forget now a lot of this will be covered with foliage and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to switch now to another brush. A round. Let's take a small round. It's not a detailed brush. It's just uh, the next size up from a detailed brush we'll say. And I'm going to make this slightly thinner now this time so it flows a bit better to get points on these branches okay so just pull that out give it a little wiggle and if you have shaky hands guys it's perfect for this kind of work so bring on the shaky hands isn't that right um, I'm going to bring a couple of branches down I'm going to keep these light initially okay I'm going to keep them nice and light that's a nice warm colour and 
let's take another mix of that color and make it quite thin so it really flows um, I'm gonna go right up here with that there we are so next what I'm gonna do now guys is I'm gonna start putting some darks onto this so I'm looking at the photo and it's nice and dark up here isn't it so I'm gonna take for this a very deep shadowy color I'm gonna take some Taylo blue and cadmium red now I'm keeping this more on the red side because if I keep it more on the blue side it'll mix with this and go green it'll go kind of a greeny shadowy color so I'm gonna keep this more on the red so let me just take a touch of red here um, where was I? oh yeah red oh yeah just there God, I'm, I'm losing my mind guys I am losing it so a bit of red into that and let's put that nice dark colour up around here and I'm going to cut in front of this branch now ok just like that and soften it in ok and I might add a touch of black to it and put some down here there we are because it's all in shadow this is all kind of in shadow now up in the tree so my next thing now what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to decide does the shadow coming this way across so that means the shadow will have to be on the right hand side here won't it and the light will be on the left hand side so I'm just going to make that decision um, I'm going to mix some very strong shadow colour for this uh, take some burnt umber and I'm going to start forming a nice strong shadow down here now these brush strokes that I'm putting on are the early stages of the tree I will be putting lots of texture on this very very soon there we go and we might even use our knives guys in a minute um, I'm just going to take a little detail brush first and I'm going to take some burnt umber and I'm going to put a nice burnt umber just along here a nice little shadow and cut in front of that then and let's put some shadow along on these you see so it's developing now very slowly and this does take time so don't be rushing it too much take your time enjoy it we will have some lovely highlights on these branches as well guys in a minute so let's uh, try and get some of these darks in and then just flicking my brush down that's all I'm doing and let me just get some more blue because my tail of blue has run out a little bit of blue there that's it and that's a very very strong color isn't it tail of blue it only requires a tiny little bit for such a huge amount of paint and let's just put a little flick of that here and there and as I said guys you can leave all of this dry um, for a few hours if you want if it makes if it makes life easier for you just let it dry and you won't have this much trouble then trying to get your darks to sit on top of the paint but I've kind of I've managed to kind of learn how to control the paint wet into wet over the years because I've just painted wet into wet all the time um, I think it gives a lovely soft effect so I'm kind of quite used to doing this um, now I'm going to start putting some lighter colour on this so I'm going to start lightening the values here now and I won't worry about little details of the branches and stuff like that not for a while um, ok let's take some burnt sienna and let's take a bit of yellow 
and that's a nice lighter colour here now. And let's start putting this on. I'm going to start with some of the roots. Just a little highlight here and there on the roots. And let's take a bit of Naples yellow into that. And around the centre here, just flick it down. Okay. So you can see now it's starting to, to lighten. It's starting to lighten very, very slowly. Uh, I'll take some burnt cyan now with a little bit of red. That'll give us a slightly warmer tone. And I'm going to take some burnt cyan now with some Naples yellow. And let's get that nice light colour. So around here. And just practice this guys at home. Just have a bit of fun with this practice it away at home yourselves. Let me just turn this here a little because the colours are really not coming through at all are they? Um, I might switch to the knife to try and get some thicker colour on this just so you guys can see properly. Okay? Um, yeah, in fact that's what I'll do. I think I'll just switch to this knife. I'm going to switch to this knife and take some Naples yellow. I'll take some burnt cyan. And I'm going to just mix that very, very lightly. And I'm going to start putting some of that on here. See? Just scrape it down. And that's creating a nice effect already, isn't it? Again, follow the direction of the tree trunk. And we're getting some lovely effects of bark here now, aren't we? Uh, let's take a bit more Naples yellow and go right in the front here with some bright highlights. And I'm cleaning my knife every time I do this. I'm just giving it like a quick wipe. Um, I want to put a bit up here. There's a little bit of light just catching that. And let's put a little along here let's take some burnt cyan now with some white burnt cyan but white makes a lovely autumn colour and let's just put some of that under here So have a bit of fun with it guys, don't be, don't be shy. Just grab your tools, grab your brushes and your knives and just go with it, have a bit of fun. Don't be shy, just make the most of it. Now I'm going to take some of that lighter colour and I'm going to just put a little bit of lighter colour up here. And a little bit there. And then I'll take my little pointy brush and get some black. I'm going to take some black here now. And I'm just going to put a hint of some shadows on the back just here and there with this. Okay, just like that. And of course we have some really dark ones on this side because we have a shadow here. This is all in shadow. So we really have some dark ones here. You see? That's coming to coming together quite nice. Now I'm going to take some really bright colour. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow with some burnt sienna and some naples yellow. And let's go along here and just hit that with some lights here and there. Okay. Just one or two. Um, I'm going to hit it with a couple here. Because of course we're going to have light coming through the tree as well. So a little bit of light just kind of hitting it here and there. Uh, 
and just put one or two along just I suppose just try to avoid fiddling really is the uh, the motto and what I'm going to do now is just put a nice strong shadow off of this so I'm just going to take my fan brush and let's pick up some black and some yellow and just dab okay from the base of that tree dab it right across there now isn't that nice and you see the tree then sits down into the grass it almost disappears and that's what I like to call rooting the tree giving it somewhere to sit so the next step I'm going to do is get some foliage going and we could even do some knife work with the foliage as well uh, let me just see now I'm just making sure I have all the colour I need on my palette um, let me see in fact what I might do there actually is I might just soften some of these with the soft brush just a few just here and there make it a bit softer yeah that's it and let's take let's take this nice fan brush again and let's go right in there now to that yellow and I'm making this a little on the wet side so I'm going to take that and I'm going to take a little black so I'm taking kind of a mid green with this now okay and just carefully just dabbing some foliage here and there you can go through the tree as well um, it's very very dark up here isn't it so I'll keep that dark now just for a while I'll just get a bit of light in here first and you see it's just a case of picking up some foliage here and there um, just kind of let it fall, fall away down and this is the fun part of painting this is you know this is you're supposed to have fun with this and again it's, it's only just a quick tutorial it's not you know uh, you can kind of take your time and go into real detail with this if you want um, I kind of tend to like to keep things nice and simple um, I think it has a nicer effect if you just kind of keep things simple don't overdo um, don't overdo it uh, let's get some dark foliage in here and then we'll hit these with some lights in a minute So you see now that branch has almost disappeared, hasn't it? Uh, let me see. A little bit up here. And what I might do there actually is I might just lighten the tree trunk on the left hand side a little bit more. Because I think it could be a little bit lighter. It's a little bit still little bit too dark for me so I just take a bit of Naples yellow I'm just going to lighten that down at the bottom uh, let's try a bit of cadmium with that So oh, it's just a case of flicking the brush down, that's all. And slowly but surely it's coming together, isn't it? A little 
bit just through here. Um, the light will be coming through up here as well. Okay, it's just kind of hit and miss. And then, um, let me just think here now. Let's take the knife. And let's, let's have a go with the knife. And let's take some cadmium yellow pale. And let's take some titanium white. And let's mix those in together. Give those a good mix. And let's just suggest some leaves and some foliage just here and there on that. So the knife is fantastic for this kind of work, it really is. And I'm just being careful with this, I'm not kind of overdoing it. I'm not I'm not going to um just that dabbing all over the place. I'm just kind of doing it in little sections. And again, I'm just thinking to myself here now, keep it simple, keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate things at all. And they don't even have to look like leaves, they just have to suggest to the eyes that there's leaves on the tree. Um, I, f I found, even when I was kind of beginning as well, I kind of found I was trying to paint each tree, uh, each leaf individually, and I was trying to make it look like a leaf. But in reality, your your eyes kind of fill in the details, don't they? And so I've kind of learned that over the years. Um, you know, not to take too much notice of something. Your eyes will tell you that it's there. So just try and keep that in mind. And let's just put a couple here. You see? It's only little flicks with the, with the knife, that's all it is. And look, we could even put some even down on the floor as well. You see? Let's just suggest a couple on the floor. Isn't that nice? And that breaks up the shadow then as well. There we have it. And if you can go along then, when you're finished, like with your with a lot of the big work, when you're finished, you can just go along. And let's suppose I want to put a little few shadows here and there. So I'll take some black and a touch of cadmium red. And I might just go around and put a few little twigs just here and there, coming off of the branches. Okay. Like so. You can darken the shadow if you like. Put a little bit of tail of blue on it. Make it really strong. You see? And in fact what you could do, to give it a bit of a glow, let's take some tail of blue and some red with some white. And then let's put some of that just on the shadow just here and there. And you see what that does? It really gives the tree kind of a glow as if, as if the sunlight from the grass is kind of glowing up on the tree. And that gives a lovely effect. I love putting things like this. It's, it's, it's not a color that you think of putting on a tree, but if you put something like this just in the shadows here and there, it really gives it a bit of a glow, doesn't it? And it lifts up the shadows, it really kind of lifts them out and I suppose it almost kind of brings the shadows to life, doesn't it? There you see. So a shadow doesn't have to be black or brown or grey, a shadow can be blue. Um, so continuing on, what was I doing? Yeah, a couple of leaves here and there, or a couple of twigs. And then you can suggest some bright twigs here and there, just with perhaps some Naples yellow. Let's put a couple of bright ones in. Okay. And 
And guys, that will do. That will do absolutely fine. In fact, you know what would be nice here? As usual, let's put a red man walking through the field. And that little bit of red will pop out. So, he could be slightly hunched over, holding a little stick in his hand, as I put in most of my paintings. I know you're probably saying, would you ever stop painting those bloody men? But look, or those figures, should I say. But look, yeah, add a bit of interest to the painting. He has a little stick, he's walking through the field. And let's put some hair on the guy. He's leaning that way. And then a little shadow coming off. And it softens into that colour then. And then let's just sit him down. Let's take some yellow, white, and let's just sit him down. There we go. And just break it up a little. So there we are. That is a nice little tutorial on um, creating bark on a tree. Now guys, you can go further than this, as I said. You can uh, keep adding little details. So I'm going to put like a little black, a suggestion of little shadows on the bark. You see? Just one or two here and there. And it all adds to the effect. Um, but you know, that's, that's a nice simple uh, tutorial of a tree. So I'm going to now, um, I'm going to turn the page. What I'll do now is I'll tear off this page. Okay, there we go. And we have a nice clean page underneath. So let me just put this down here now very carefully somewhere. I'll let that dry. And we have another one underneath. And for this one, um, now I'm just going to check my computer here, my tablet. I was thinking of a nice little, a little snow scene for a change. What about that? What about a snow scene? We get some snow on the trees. Some nice thick, a thick blanket of snow up on those trees. So I think that would work quite well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean off my white here because it has mixed with lots of different colours, so I'm just going to clean that off. You're really being spoiled. Now, there we go. Just give this a quick wipe, just to get rid of some of that green off of this. It's because I don't want these greens mixing with the snow. Or there will be trouble. There will be trouble ahead. Oh, let's go. So take some clean tissue. Now, and let me just put that down next to my jar. And I'm just going to change the turpentine. So I'm going to clean this dirty turpentine now with my tissue. There we go. Give it a nice clean out. And I'll put in some fresh turpentine. So these colours now are going to be very cool colours. And um, again, I'm going to keep it simple. Nice fresh, a nice fresh crisp snow scene. So it's a nice wintry morning and we're going out for a nice fresh walk. And a light blue sky. No clouds, just a nice bright blue sky. So for that now I'm going to take my little soft brush again, dip it in the turpentine quickly and let's take a touch of blue and let's take plenty of white. I'm just going to put that on here now and see what that looks like. In fact what I might do guys, I might take some cobalt for a change because I want to keep this very fresh and cobalt blue is a very fresh kind of blue colour, fresh sky blue colour. So I'm going to try some cobalt for this. 
and that's a bit better, isn't it? It's nice and um, it's a real fresh morning. Now let's have to hit some brown there on the can on the palette saw. I'm just gonna give this brush a quick clean. There we go. I'm back to the colour again. Um, so snow scenes, I love painting snow scenes. Um, painting trees in a snow scene is the easiest thing you could do guys it really really is uh, just try and keep your colours nice and clean that's what I'll say which I'm not doing obviously I'm not doing a very good job of it am I my colours are going all over the place on the palette here and on my canvas they're mixing with all different colours but sometimes that's a good thing if you're picking up certain colours on a palette, sometimes it can actually help the painting. That's what I find. Now I'm just going to dampen my brush again. Back into some white. And just bring this down. I'm just going to come down to the same as the other one that I did. Just bring it down a bit. And I really hope you're enjoying these tutorials, guys. I really do. And again, you know, thank you for all your support. You have been so kind to me. Um, it really does mean a lot. You have no idea all these comments and compliments. It really, really does mean a lot to me. So uh, thank you for that. Now, let's go. Okay. We have that, I'm going to put some very bright colour just down the bottom here. Suggest some snow starting on the land. And let's put a couple of little trees just off in the distance here. Now for this I'm just going to switch to my small pointy brush again. And I'm going to take some burnt umber with black. Now I don't have black left so I have to put some black out. Uh, let me see now. Let me just put a little spot of black just there. Yes? And very, very simply now again, just, just be nice and free with this. A little bit of brown, a little bit of black, and plenty of water. Or turpentine, should I say. I'm going off my bloody game today. Plenty of turpentine. And nice and wet here. Let's go off in the distance now and put a couple of trees off in the distance. I'm just going to suggest one or two little trees way, way, way off. All right? Just a, just a few. Just to add a bit of interest into the painting. That's all. That's the only reason I'm doing it. And let's put another one next to it here. Okay. This kind of splits off in two, doesn't it? And I hope you can see that uh, image all right on your screen. It's just a very simple snow scene. Just for the tutorial, that's all. A um, couple of little branches now, which are a little small brush. And I'm almost just hitting the canvas paper, even just with one little hair off of the brush. That's all, in, that's all you need to use. And let's put a couple of... Suggest a few little bits and pieces. You know, little posts, little bushes starting, you know, that kind of thing. Because it's so far away, you're not really going to see anything anyway. And a smaller one just off here there we are just like that no highlights no shadows that's it nice and simple um, and then I'm just going to take I'll take this brush again the one I just used and I'm going to make a little grey for this so a little bit of grey with the cobalt so a bit of black and a bit of blue Okay, let's call it that, black and blue. And I'm just going to put in a little shadow just here and there on the right hand side. Okay, just a touch. See, everyone follow? And then I'm going to take another brush 
and let me get my other brush now. Let me see where I put it. Ah, there it is. Take this other brush, another worn one, clean one, and I'm going to just pick up some white. Just a little white on its own. Okay, a little dab of white. And let's put some white just up around here and there. On the left hand side. And that's where the light is coming from, the left. Okay. Everybody seeing that okay? Let's put a bit here. And this. And I'm softening it then into the dark colour, you see. And that's a nice little tree off in the distance. And let's just run our brush under those trees now. There we are. And again, give it a little wiggle. So I'm going to come down now and I'm going to fill in the rest of this hair. I'm just going to use a clean brush for that. I'm going to start off with a darker tone, so I'm going to just mix some white into this colour that we had. And it's kind of a whitey blue. You see? A nice kind of a whitey blue colour. And that's the shadow. And I'm going at a slight angle now, okay? I'm not going to go straight across. Um, something with a bit of angle on it makes it more interesting, I find. I'm going to take a touch of red in the blue, warm it up just slightly as it comes to us. Nice, simple background colour. And let's put a bit more just around here, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, small brush, little small brush like this, and I'm going to pick up some white. What I'll do is I'll pick up a white with a touch of Naples yellow. Okay, let's see if we can create some nice bright snow with this. Naples yellow and white. And just here and there, let's just create some texture through the snow. I'm just kind of dragging it along now here and there. I'm not being very particular with this. Um, just creating some light hitting the snow there off in the distance, that's all. And just come down in the front. And let's put one or two just here. You see? And I soften it down then. And it just creates interest, that's all. It's simple, but, you know, it's just... It's giving some layer to the snow, that's all. Now, this tree. This lovely big brown tree. I'm going to stick with this brush. I'll just give it a quick clean there, guys. And I'm going to stick with this. I'm just going to go into some burnt umber. And I'm going to take a little dab of white. And I'm going to just stick with that colour just for now. And I'm going to put in the trunk. So let's see now. Uh, put a trunk in here. Nice thick trunk. And let's come off of this with a little branch. And as the branches go, or as the branches kind of come off of that, then they almost go black. Okay. So I will put dark colour on these now very, very soon with the detail brush. Yes. And we have another. Um, Let's see, now we have another one, which almost cuts in front of that tree. And let's come right across here with this one. A 
There we are. Let's give it a little kick out at the end for the roots. You see, just a little. Like so. And let's let's go up now. Um I'm gonna take some Naples yellow in this. There we are. A nice soft pale colour. And we have a big branch that kind of breaks off this. Goes off in that direction. And we have another one down here. I'm going to turn that down like this. Make it more interesting. There we are. Um, and there's a very dark... We have a very dark tree trunk right up in the top of this painting, don't we? It's very dark and very deep, deep colour. So I'm just going to put some black through that. And I'm going to even put some blue and red through that as well, because it's a snow scene, so the blue colours will help. Um, let me see now. Put a bit on this. And let's put some on the back of these. So it's difficult to tell now at the moment that these are two separate trees. Um, but even in the photograph it's different to tell from the bottom up. It's almost like two separate trees um, which are kind of intertwined. Now it's probably just the way the bark has kind of split. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to suggest that it's almost just one tree. Let's just keep it simple. Now, I'm going to go to my smaller brush and let's put some shadow on the right hand side of this. Again, with a little bit of blue and a little bit of red. Okay. That's it. Just like that. And then I'm going to pick up some black. And I'm going to make that nice and thin. And let's have a bit of fun now. I'm just going to just put in some nice branches and twigs and all sorts of things up here. And you can really go to town now, guys, with your practice on this. You see? And it's just a case really of bringing one down like this and then coming off of that one, then coming off that, and so on and so on. You see? It's that simple. And let's put that up here and come right over now, right over these trees. That are off in the distance. You see, it's coming together, isn't it? Isn't that lovely. And this is a nice bit of practice. I like these kind of paintings. It's just refining your technique. That's all, you know. Just and you almost you kind of learn something new every time, don't you? When you're painting like this. It's like, oh yeah, I never did that before. Yeah, that's that's kind of nice, you know. And it's um, it's a lovely way to paint. Now let's bring a branch down here just to fill that spot up just a little. There we go. So we're coming on nice, aren't we? Now I'm going to just put st start putting a few highlights just along here and for that I'm going to take some white which I don't have again. Oh lads, I tell you what, you use some white don't you? You use a lot of white when painting. Let's take some white and let's take a dab of... Now, I'm just thinking of colour here. I'm going to take some Naples yellow. And then that's going to mix with the colour on the canvas, you see. There we go. And a 
it's a nice soft kind of a highlight colour I'm looking for. I'm not going for very bright highlights um, with the snow scene. It's more soft kind of highlights. There we go. Because we have snow on this as well, so I just want to keep that in mind. So nice little highlights here and there on the branches. And a little bit of it here. And soften that in then. Just to take the edge off. Just we don't want very hard edges on these highlights. Okay? Just soft edges. And what I love about this wet into wet technique is that you see it's mixing with all these colours underneath and it's creating some lovely shades. Um different shades of lights and darks. You see? Isn't that just lovely? You see that? That's quite nice. And just create a little bit of texture around the tree then just with that colour that you have. See, I'm just flicking my little brush down and I'm twisting it out then at the end. See, I'm following the direction of the the bark on the tree. That's all. You see? Now I know the tree trunk looks a bit thick. We can thicken the top one here actually. Let's thicken it. Let's thicken it up slightly, why not? And that'll just make it that look that bit more convincing. I suppose the word is we're looking for. There we are. And on those branches now, guys, there's lots of thick snow, isn't there? So I want to get that on. And I'm just going to wash my brush here. And I'm just going to pick up some plain white. Nice, thick white paint. And just here and there on the branches, I'm just going to rest that along the branches. You see? A couple of dabs here and there. See, I'm kind of twisting my brush as it's coming off. Then clean the brush, go back into the white. See, I'm just resting some nice thick paint on those branches. And that's why I, I wanted to have a nice blue sky in the background because if I had a very bright white sky in the background here, you wouldn't see all of this. You wouldn't see these whites. So bear in mind if you're putting snow on a tree, have something slightly dark behind it. It's slightly darker background. Um, and it will really make the snow pop out and off the tree, you see. So now this one here, let's put a good chunk of white on that. That's a big thick branch, isn't it? That can hold a lot of snow. Um, a couple around here and there, you see. So it's a lot of fun doing it this way. Let's put a bit on here, on that. And there can be little bits of snow hanging down between the, the branches, that type of thing. Because you know yourself when there's snow on a tree, it just goes everywhere, doesn't it? And a little bit just here at the end. And then we must put a shadow on that, don't we? Now it's only just a little shadow. Um, but nonetheless, we should put a shadow there, really, shouldn't we? So let's take a little bit of blue and a bit of red. And let's just pull a nice little shadow off of that. And it's disappearing then into the tree, you see? Okay. And look, we can even soften it with our fingers. Make it nice and soft. And then let's clean the brush and put some snow. Now I want to really make this snow pop. So I'm going to take some Naples yellow with some white. And that should make the snow look like there's real bright sunlight hitting the snow. Ah, you see? That's exactly what I was going for. Little Naples yellow really goes a long way, guys.
Um, you could even go so far as to use cadmium yellow for this if you wanted. That would work also. You see, I'm just kind of creating a bit of texture, that's all. And notice then how the tree almost disappears into the snow. There's no bottom to the tree. It's just softened into the snow then. And that's what I love about these aisles. You can really work the paint around with your brush. Isn't that right? So guys, that's a nice simple one, isn't it? And let's get some... Let's get some colour on the, uh, let's get some snow on the um, tops of the trees now with this. So again, fan brush, make sure it's clean. God above, if there's any green in this, the whole painting will be ruined. Isn't that right? So let's take some nice clean, nice clean fan brush and let's pick up some of that yellow. Now you can, or some of the white. Let's pick up a little bit of Naples yellow with that. And that should really help it stand out from the crowd you see i'm just using the corner of my brush and just dabbing here and there get a nice bit of texture going on the tree isn't this fun so close-up trees they're nice it's nice to paint close-up trees as well for a change isn't it Rather than painting stuff that's kind of off in the distance all of the time. A little bit down here on this. And don't worry if you're picking up some of that dark colour with the fan brush. That's good. That helps the composition as well. Okay. So guys, I think that's it. Um, I think that should just about do it. Um, and you know what? For a little perspective, let's put a man in this as well. How about that? I'm going to take some burnt cyanide this time. And let's put a little man walking off in the distance. And it's nice, I think it's nice to have people in a painting like this because it gives it a bit of life, doesn't it? Um, I know a lot of people would disagree with that, but I think um, a person in a painting or a figure of someone in a painting really kind of brings it to life. So there we are. And let's put a head on this guy. And again, a little stick coming down. So now we want to darken it just slightly there on one side. Just uh, give it a bit, of, a bit of shadow. And a little shadow on the floor. With a little bit of dark blue. And then we can pull that with our finger across. See? And that's it. So a quick sign. Stephen Conway and guys, you can visit my Facebook page on Stephen Conway Art at Facebook and uh, you can go to my Patreon link as well. Um, as I said before, every single little cent and euro helps. Everything helps. So you can donate there as well. Um, pledge. And... Um, my website, uh, God, it's a very, very long name on my website now, guys. It's Steve's Paintings uh, dot Wix site dot com forward slash Steve's Eye Paintings. All the links will be up on your screen. Um, so let me just take the camera down here. And let's have a look at this now. Look at that. Isn't that lovely. So you can see the colour is kind of a little bit better now, guys, than this, with it being so close up, you see? And wasn't that so simple? And it only took us a half an hour. Isn't that just amazing? And let me get the other one for you. Let me show you the other one. So now you can see the colours a bit better, can't you? So the lovely cyanas going through that with the Naples yellow just here. 
they really complement each other and then this little blue in the shadow you can see it really kind of makes it pop out doesn't it so they look quite nice in the frame so you could frame these by all means and it's just nice nice and simple so i hope you liked it guys i really enjoyed that that was nice that was good fun wasn't it a little bit of practice for us um once again thank you very very much for watching i hope you're enjoying these tutorials um whatever i can do to help just ask okay and you can email me at stephenconway12 at gmail.com if you have any questions um that you'd like or you can show me your work if you have any um paintings that you'd like my opinion on i'll be only too happy to help um so stay tuned uh, another tutorial coming up very very soon okay guys god bless thanks very very much and see you again soon